Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. As you notice, it's a little different. Uh, you have a bulletin because we're doing a uh, passion, palm and passion uh, worship, a cry of the audience or cry of the congregation. So there are reading parts. You'll do the bolded parts for people. And I and a reader will do the other parts. And we will journey along with Jesus. So at the part where we read about the Last Supper, we will have communion. At the part where he's praying in the garden, we will do our prayers. And so it will proceed. The end of our service will end in um, just a, a blessing and dismissal, and there'll be no music, so because we are beginning Holy Week, and so um, we will just continue into Monday, Thursday. Uh, we'll have worship services at noon and at seven o'clock, and there'll be slightly different services because uh, the seven o'clock we'll have first communion, and on Friday we'll have an, uh, a a uh, cantata. Uh, worship service, and then uh, with our choirs, uh, Prince of Peace and Messiahs, and then on Saturday we'll have an Easter vigil at 5.30. Next Sunday, 8.30, traditional service, 11 o'clock, contemporary. All of your announcements you need to know pretty much are in the messenger, so please take that home, look through it, you'll see the calendar for the week. And with that, let us, uh, I need my palm. Hopefully you have a palm. And we'll begin. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter,
Then Judas is Wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes, as it is written, of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. And he said to them, This is the, my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I never drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Return to God with all your heart. Receive bread for the journey. Drink for the desert. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We will commune along the railings. You may either kneel or stand. There are, you will receive the bread, and then either dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice, and there are gluten-free elements available. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike... and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand invite you to please stand for prayers of the people. On this holy night, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who wait for the Lord's great and abundant mercy. We pray for the church. Bless all who call upon your name. Unite your church in bearing witness to the gospel. Pour your love into our hearts and inspire us to pour out our lives in service to the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the nations, for peace among all, especially those who honor Jerusalem as holy ground, for all who hold positions of authority and power, 
for all who suffer oppression and for those who serve in the armed forces. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in need, for those who have suffered betrayal, for those who live in poverty, for those who have no voice or power, for the forsaken and forgotten, for those who are in crisis, and for those who are ill. We especially pray for Larry Mitchnick, Valerie Brown, Aidan Taylor, and Clinton police officers Nathan Betancourt and Nicholas Casper. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this assembly, for those preparing for baptism or confirmation, for musicians, altar guilds, ushers, and all who lead us in worship, for those who serve our community through food pantries, homeless shelters, and clothing banks. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember all who, like Mary, the mother of Jesus, have been obedient to your will and all who have died in faith. Bring us with them into your glory to dwell with you in life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Into the arms of your tender embrace, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who on the cross opened his arms to all. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it. 
it saying? I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. 
So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the king, chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? They shouted all the more, Crucify. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard, the courtyard of the palace that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him 
and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling to Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in the tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid.
In baptism, we have been fused to this story. In Holy Week, we make our way through it again. Because it brings us to the life of Christ. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, give you compassion as you live the ancient story, strength to follow the cross of Christ, and the guidance of the Spirit as you move from Gethsemane to Golgotha. Amen.